Hi everybody, uh, it's Colin from CSIS. Uh, we're here today in Bar Campstead, just below the People State Forest. According to the map, we're right here. And uh, you know, we talk about fishing a lot. Well, this is a year-round fly fishing area. It's got a lot of history. The Hitchcock chairs used to be made here, and you're seeing some of the animals. Um, we got a lot of a lot of regulations, a lot of information, of course. Don't confuse your salmon with your trout, and you'll notice the tail pointed on a salmon. You'll notice the eyelet comes to the middle of the eye and the back of the jaw. And this comes to the back of the jaw and above, below the eye, and that's a trout. It's okay to keep. Salmon do not keep them. They are protected. There's just a lot of information here. We're going to be going into the People's State Forest today. All right, we're going to go to this stone museum indicated right here. And uh, then there's a forest on the other side. This is the American Legion uh, State Forest. But this area, this area in here, in here, this is the most sightings of Squatch in Connecticut. So uh, we're just going to go over there. We're going to take a little walk and, and show you some fishermen. So this is fly fishing only, probably catch and release. Uh, this is a great spot. If you're into fishing, bang, here we are. Hi again. Uh, and I just noticed this, we were about to walk over there, but I couldn't resist here. Thanks for visiting your local fly brary. And what that is, is there's not one now, but these fishermen will leave uh, flies for you to fish with here that are working right now. And that is pretty freaking cool. Okay, if you're into fishing, you got an extra fly, <laughs> leave one at your local fly brary. <laughs> you just never know what you're going to find. We got some more information over here. A lot of this, uh, a lot of this information is on the history of the dam and stuff like that. And here's some of the native animals. We're just going to move along. There is a, uh, oh, we missed it, Fall Fisherman's Flea Market. We missed that. We're going to go find us some fishermen. Hi, everybody. So here we are at the fishing hole, and I'm counting five to six guys actually in the water. November 13th. Uh, Saturday about 137 and it's about 40 degrees a little chilly but you can see uh, behind me here uh, that they're fishing and they're loving it and this again is just one of the squatchiest places in the state people are out recreating acting like it's summer because that's what you <laughs> okay that's that's a motorcycle playing a poison song see these guys are out here just having fun and we're gonna go that way we're gonna go upstream but there's a there is a road that comes in here and this is all this is all a uh, fishing access there's a road that goes down there and of course you can just get in the water they seem they're here all year they'll be here in a snowstorm in February these guys are hardcore fishermen and they're out just having fun they're out just having fun, enjoying the day, which, you know, I'm watching them like, geez, I should be in the water with them. But we're squatching today. We're fishing for a different thing. We're after a monster, too. We're not going to bother them. No, you, you don't bother them, guys. Just leave them you know, of course, I want to go ask them a bunch of questions, but I'm not going to. We're going to just uh, continue. But we just wanted to show you this because, again, it's about getting out there. We'll see you at the People State Forest. Okay, so we're driving through the woods here. We are currently at um, People State Forest in Bar Campstead. We're on location, and uh, this this place, since 2008, has become um, the the most frequent sightings of Bigfoot anomalous cryptid animals in the state of Connecticut. And as you see, as we're just driving through, you can see why. This is um, 3,050 acres of protected forest. In two and three quarter miles, turn left on Highway 20. And if you turn two and three quarters, you'll be left, you'll be on Highway 80. But um, yeah, this is a cool place. So thank you for checking us out.
Hi everybody, here we are. We're at uh, the People State Forest. Here I got my map, which is over here in this nice little box. We've got an information area. And of course, um, we're going to go up to, we are in Matthews Grove. And we're going to try to get up to the Stone Museum here and um, get squatching in the place that has probably the most sightings of Bigfoot. We went back, we did a little research, and um, there are like eight or nine since 2018 sightings in this general area. So we're going to get up there. We got a few tricks. But we always have something new for you, so we got some new stuff for you today, and we'll be showing you that out there on the trail. And we'll see you out there. People are already using it. How's it going today? Good. Good. So a lot of recreation down here, and uh, we'll be joining them in just a minute. A lot of history here. Um, they're just talking, you know, the history, how this, this stuff was made. It's interesting how we here say, uh, on the 1771 map of this area identified as the Indian place. I mean, you push the people out and they try to survive and, and then you see that they found a further place to be and, and then you want to drive them out and then name it after them. Yeah, it's not a practice I'm overly fond of myself. Kind of messed up. Uh, but you know, here we are, Matthews Grove, where elevation is 440 feet above sea level. And we're going to get in there. Hi everybody, um, so we found this cool little, we're at, the, at the, the foot of the museum here, and we come upon this, and this is a demonstration charcoal pile, and it's really interesting, talked about how Connecticut had clear cut most of its trees to produce charcoal, and um, this here shows you how they would have done it, that would have been left to smolder for about two weeks or so, and uh, up to 30 cords of wood high so you could imagine how massive these things must have been at the time so we're gonna go check out the museum there's a lot of people here and we hope to show you something different today and uh, there's a lot of activity here but it I mean these massive massive trees here very squatchy place deep deep forest we're in 3,050 acres of forest land alone in the people state forest then you have the American Legion and it goes on and on they have forest connecting to forest after forest here and the whole thing makes for a humongous greenway so yes it's squatchy but today it's noisy but we're gonna demonstrate some stuff anyway let's go check out this museum Here we are at the Nature Museum, uh, just off People's State Forest in Bark Hampstead. I mean, it's closed due to coronavirus, and uh, the, I don't know why the windows are boarded up. Don't even let you see the displays. But there are kiosks all over the place. A lot of information here. Um, this was built in 1935 and um, was made entirely of Connecticut field stones and American chestnut trees before they were killed in uh, the blight, the chestnut blight. It's a cool place, a lot of activity here. Um, so I could, I mean, I can see why. This is one of the largest tracts of forested land in Connecticut. So you're gonna have um, a lot of wilderness. And it's, from what I'm seeing, one of the most popular. So you're gonna have a lot of potential witnesses. We're gonna move on and uh, try to demonstrate some new stuff today. Okay, so we're walking along uh, trying to find a trail that's kind of uh, not being used and we look down and see that there. 
you see a black bear painted on a glacial erratic, and you know, a lot of people, there's some friends that asked us about rocks in New York, so come here, people state forest, head to the stone museum and then go down the road. And there, right here, just off of it, is that cool stone. I'm a painter myself with a very cool painted black bear, almost life-size. That made the trip worth it right there. This place is squatchy, we're gonna get in there. Okay, here we are. We're at that time in our investigation when we talk to a glacial erratic rock. They don't, they're not very talkative. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and do it. Have you seen any kind of gigantopithecus, large, hairy looking wild man anywhere around here? Oh, so you have. Are we on the trail, the right trail of this guy? No. Of course not but you have seen him so he's been in the area all right well we're gonna move along you're a nice rock covered in moss here we explained about glacial erratics and our friends in new york well so far our people state forest here in barkhampton connecticut is delivering the goods let's see if it can deliver a big foot and again so we talk about gifting for little people right we did that in the last episode and we're going to do the same thing again today in this hollow of the tree right here. I don't have a penny today. I should not say that. We do that gifting of the little people. Nice shiny penny for them. Heads up. Go ahead and put that right in there. We explained why copper is a great gift. One of the three noble metals. And I'm not going to repeat all that today because watch our episodes. You'll get educated. We got a couple tricks for you today, too. Here we go. So, this is what's left of a pine cone. The squirrels will get up here and eat these pine cones. And they do, for your survival people, they do have edible parts. And inside of there, this isn't the greatest one, but inside of there is a little pine nut, just like any other pine nut. Not, not the big ones you get in the store, little ones, but if you're a squirrel, the nut's right there, and it's winter, you're going to eat that. Fats and carbohydrates and proteins, you're definitely going to eat that. A lot of people here. So we talk about call tapping, and I've seen people ask what call tap is. Call tap is potentially a form of communication over vast distances in a forest. Remember, they don't have Wi-Fi or cell phones or any of this. What they do have is sticks and logs, sticks and stones. And these guys can definitely break your bones. There's a lot of people here. I'm not going to do the loudest call tap, but I do want to do one. You might have heard that. Now, I don't know if that's somebody goofing on us. That was a pretty convincing call tap. I'm going to try two. All right, so that could have been a car, that could have been a person, but that could have been a legitimate call tap.
real squatchy in here. We're going to take a little break. I'm going to have to say that was inconclusive, although it's pretty convincing to pull. A lot of people know about call taps, and they watch the shows on TV. They know about howls. There's a lot of people here. You hear a call tap, they might just respond as a person. Inconclusive. That certainly started the woodpeckers up. Um, there's a lot of people here. So howling is, they're probably going to cut back on that until nighttime. But uh, we did hear a tap response. Whether that was, uh, well, it was inconclusive, but it's pretty solid. Bunch of kids coming our way. Camera person saw somebody walking through the woods. I had seen them before, camera person. And uh, I pointed. And uh, obviously she got scared thinking I was pointing at a Bigfoot. So there you go, misidentification. Just a, a, a human wearing dark clothes walking in the woods in these November woods, as you see. Even though we're in pines here, a lot of the leaves are gone and you can see further through the woods. We definitely have a group of kids coming by. Okay, so we talked about call tapping a lot. One thing we didn't talk about is rock tapping. And yes, they communicate with rock. Sometimes they seem to prefer rocks. So we got a soapstone and I don't know a pegmatite. And I have no idea what that's gonna sound. I'm gonna do two. So when you do something like that, keep in mind if, if you're communicating to a potential Bigfoot, uh, you want to give them time to respond because it's not like, you know, they got to find a stick, they got to find a rock. But let's come over here. I want to see what this is. I thought it was feathers on here, but it's just a pattern of this old tree. is a cool place. 3,050 acres and then more and more after that. Tens of thousands of acres of total forest around here. Okay so we told you we're going to show you some new stuff. We just demonstrated rock tapping for you. We're off of this picnic area over here but we came across a track. Now if you look around there's a lot of rocks this path is very hard and there's a lot of leaves. Look at when I step on it, there's almost nothing. There's not a lot of soft soil here, but this seems to be a little wet area. We did find this deer track.
Okay, we're gonna make a cast. This print here, and it's definitely a deer, is five inches long uh, by three and a half inches wide. So that's a big deer. And we're gonna mix up a, we're gonna mix plaster and take a cast of this. Now, we're demonstrating this fully saying this is a deer footprint, um, but this is how you would gather evidence for a Bigfoot. I got a bag here to mix it in. I got a bag here to collect any evidence here. And I have regular plaster of Paris that I just bought at a hardware store. This is that brand. Uh, it was really cheap. And water. So we're going to mix these up. We would then put the cast in here. We're going to save this cast today. We're going to identify it. It's our first time doing this for you. You can use any kind of container to mix this up. This is going to pour a good bit in here. Plaster dries very fast, and the camera person said, oh, it's a little watery. Now, I'm a professional painter, and I've been working with plaster for a long time, so I'm familiar with how it works. Um, but I, the reason I want it watery is because, first of all, it is going to dry very fast, and I want it to get in and get all the details. So now I'm going to pour this in there. We're gonna let that dry. This shouldn't take more than 10 minutes maximum. So we're gonna take a little break here and let this dry. Again, keeping in mind it's not always easy to find tracks. We did, well, we must have did two miles in this trail and uh, didn't see a whole lot of tracks, but that's because of the nature. But look at, here we are getting a moss and we're finding, not far from where we just demonstrated the plaster, we're finding deer. So a group of deer moved through here and that's a good sign. This is a cool place, by the way. This is a, aside from the human activity, I could see how as it got darker or quiet or on really uh, bad inclement days, there'd be a lot of Squatch activity here. And uh, that's the historical record proves that because this is where all the sightings are happening, not just in this area, but in this particular forest. Got a lot of tracks. Now we're getting a lot of tracks. This is a vernal pool. This is um, this is a, an important habitat, and they're disappearing. And these are really important to preserve. Salamanders, and you like your spring peepers and frogs, and uh, all kinds of insects and turtles um, are going to use this here. This is a water source, but because it's fishless, because there are no fish in here, because they dry up in summer and freeze in the winter. Uh, the amphibious animals and uh, reptiles are going to leave their eggs in there and the fish won't prey on them. So when their young are born, the little tadpoles, they got a nice little place to grow up. And, you know, we need animals. So save your vernal pools. They occur all throughout New England. Okay, so we're here, Bar Campstead. I'm, um, you know, just check us out on social media. We got some interesting stuff. We got a lot of stuff going on. We're collaborating with a lot of groups. We're getting some good information. Um, but the only response we seem to get that makes sense is calls happening here. We've climbed quite a ways up on top of this mountain here, People State Forest. Another glacial erratic over there. And we seem to have gotten away from the people. So let's give it to. And remember, you, you tap, tap however you want to do it. I found three to be unproductive. One and two seem to work well. And you want to give them a minute to find a stick to respond.
So the squatch of me to this place. I would go solid five uh, based on all of the reports that are coming in. These are from 2018 to currently to today. Um, uh, but for today's adventure, it's just not very high. But overall, squatch meter, my impression of your, your ability to find the squatch here is very high. Very high. So even though I'm getting advice from the camera person, they're saying low. That's because of the human activity. But I believe, um, I believe if you were in mostly pines here, but I believe if you got back there and put some acorns, uh, you'd get a, you get a lot of activity. Today's one of those days, one of the last nice days of the year before winter sets in. So there is a lot of human activity here. But I'm going to disregard that today. And I'm going to squatch a meter this place at a 4.8. Yes, because it is squatchy. Um, seems to be a lot of forage base here. You have the river, and this is where people are seeing them. So, come out here, people State Forest or American Legion State Forest. You like fly fishing? We showed you the river earlier. You know, we're going to go back and <laughs> retrieve our plaster footprint, which we've left dry, and there's no reason to sit there and watch paint dry. And believe me, I'm a painter, I know. About 10 to 15 minutes on that. And we covered it with a leaf. We'll be able to find it again. And um, we're just demonstrating how to take a plaster cast. So, you know, look at what we did. It's just in the backpack there. Oh, did you hear that camera person? Yeah, there's an airplane. Because you can't squatch in Connecticut at any length without having an airplane in your head. We'll see you back at the footprint. Okay, so we're going to try something different. The camera person said they heard a whistling sound, so I have a whistle. Now, this is a very handy thing to have with you. This is a whistle. It's a compass. It's a mirror for signaling planes overhead. It's a dry storage area. And as I mentioned, compass. So you could keep your matches dry in there. And it has... A flint to start a fire with. It's not the greatest flint, but if you're in an emergency situation, you'd probably figure out how to light this really quick. Um, one of the good ways is just to take lint off a cotton shirt and start it with that, or you know, you could scrape away till you find dry wood or something like that. One of these things. So we're going to try a little whistle sound, and this is to help people find you. Yeah, we're, we're getting noises down that way, but I'm not surprised. Um, inconclusive. But again, now, whistling. They re there are a lot of cryptid... Re yeah, there's noises coming from that direction. Um, you never whistle at night. I mean, unless you're lost and people are looking for you, that's bad. Uh, look into that whistling at night, Native American legends. I stopped doing it. I don't recommend, but I do recommend getting one of these. I have no idea where I got this little guy, but it's a cool thing to have. We're gonna go retrieve that print. It's getting dark and cold. We're hearing tapping noises and uh, howl sounds yeah, on the way back. We're going, we're leaving now. We're on this blue and orange trail over here. That sounds like they're communicating with each other, too. You heard them, too. Hopefully we caught that on camera. They were separated. And, we, you know, we've been whistling and howling and rock tapping and basically everything. Are you guys in Texas? This is how you squatch. You know, because people are asking us, how do you... Now, these guys are saying they're, they paranormal activities associated to them. So you guys got to smudge yourselves before you go out. There's a big difference between cryptids and paranormal, even though they overlap. 
we we keep on the biological end of it. But uh, to make you know, just not waste time here. But now that we've stirred things up, there's getting to be call tap noises and howls, and people aren't here as much. As you can see the sun's going down. We got to get out of here too. So we went a, a ways up, and we got some more evidence up there. Um, you can see it's pretty dry. I'm not going to try to to lift. I'm going to lift the dirt out with it. I'm going to go underneath that guy. It's coming out nice. It's still very... We're not, we'll clean this up later. Good knife. Okay, get a definite one. It's very, very wet still. I want to be very careful with this guy. God gave you one of the greatest tools known to man, your hands. There we go. <clears throat> now he's very fragile. I'm going to carry him in my hands. And then we'll let it really dry and clean it off and we'll put it in with our own other evidence and mark it as deer print. But we demonstrated how to do it. Even if, uh, okay, if it's a warmer day, it's very wet. The ground has been raining for several days straight here. So this the sun's going down and it's November 40 something degrees. So we're not talking about the greatest drying conditions to begin with. Um, <coughs> But on a nice clear day, if you're in a warm place, that would have been solid already. <clears throat> so that was fun today. We demonstrated rock tapping, a whistle, and we're going to wrap it up here. And I'm going to gently carry out our deer track. Plaster crack, cracks easily, so I'm just going to carry it. So here you can see the, the pads. Of course, deer pads, they're bigger, like that's their heel, and the way they point, it shows you the direction of travel. Um, and uh, I probably should have mentioned that, but thank you again. We had a great day. Look at this fire pit over here. We had a great day out here. Um, if you want to give us some evidence, you know how to do that. Okay, we're not going to carry on with the social media thing. Send us your information. Let's go over here and see what the name of this place is. Thank you, everybody, uh, for checking us out. We're here at the James Stocking Youth Group Camping Area, just so you know where we are for reference. Uh, we had a lot of call tap responses here today definitely this place is very cool it's very cool just as a tourist destination you got fishing hiking camping and snowmobiling cross-country skiing it's got it all um and we got we got some solid evidence of deer in these woods we got a deer print we're gonna we're gonna check this out i'm gonna send that to dr jeff meldrum i know he likes his plaster casts how's it going dr meldrum uh, but anyway, thank you for today's investigation at People State Forest, the place in Connecticut that has absolutely the most Bigfoot sightings. And I can see why. Okay, so we're in a trout management area, which means that special regulations apply to all trout. Catch and release only. Barbless hook only. Open to fishing all year. This is a national scenic river one of only six in new england and as you look over here this river cuts through this whole valley oh uh, you got a lot of recreation how you doing sir yeah, how you, doing? you go fishing here ever uh no hiking though not much of a fisherman so there's a lot of hiking snowmobiling fishing thank you camping um this is a gorgeous river 
and uh, he's just out there with his dog. Maybe we'll get a plaster cast of his prints. But this this river goes for many miles um, throughout Connecticut. It's probably our most famous fishing river. It's absolutely pristine. Um, eagles, otters, bears, trout, juvenile salmon, a river herring come in here. There used to be sturgeon in here. This is just packed with wildlife. And so, of course, we just found out. Now, we're going to say that Connecticut innovated the flybrary. That's the kind of hook my brother in Maine would love right there. That's a goldfish. Very popular trout fishing lure. So, take a lure, leave a lure. Uh, visit your local and support your local flybrary. Anyway, we had a great time with you here. And... Uh, we hope you're liking what we're doing so check us out on our next adventure on location